We're going to have a quick look at what is trending online at the moment. So environmentalist Chris Packham is uh, threatening the government with legal action over the government's U-turn on net zero policies. Let's have a listen to what he had to say on social media. I sent him a legal letter that starts a judicial review process, meaning that if Mr Sunak does not about turn on the delays to the implementation of the policies he announced, I will apply to the High Court to challenge that change of plan. I believe we have a timeline in place to help the UK meet net zero, and this can't be changed at the will of the Prime Minister, because he doesn't have the legal right to make that decision. It's quite interesting uh, what Chris Packham's saying there. It was also quite interesting to hear again yesterday about HS2, the bit by, between Birmingham and Manchester has had royal assent. So when you're saying, I'm not going to do it, it's not as simple as saying, we'll just ditch it. There is some legal procedure oh, to doing all yeah. these things. Well, it's, it's just the way government works. So does Chris Packham perhaps... Endless have a, judicial reviews. Uh, well, I mean, does he have a point here? If the government is legally committed to certain targets, so Prime Minister saying... I've just decided, without consulting Parliament, remember, that I'm not going to do any of that. But he said he's still going to meet the targets, hasn't he? Let's be clear, he has not drawn back from meeting the targets, the legally binding targets. So I don't see really what the foundation of the case is here. Well, he has watered it down to the point that, you know, he might actually be able to get away with it for the next year, not committing to anything, not to any more expenditure, and then it'll be something that Labour has to pick up and really ramp up on. But, you know, look, you know, Sunak's big slogan was long-term decisions for a brighter future, cutting off net zero, which is, it shouldn't be politicised. It's, you know, it's well, a it very... so, because, because it's, it's day to day to people's day-to-day lives no, of course, and how much it costs Right, well, them. so day-to-day lives, it's linked to everything. If you look at climate change, you look at how many people have had to leave Libya because of the... Because it's too hot to grow anything there, too hot to live there, and there's a civil war. Climate change is intrinsically linked to migration. That is one of the number one topics we talk about all the time. If you, if people could get that cognitive, if they could understand these two things are intrinsically linked, If you linked, can find me a more. single asylum seeker who has come here because because of climate change, I'll find you genuinely. A come on, yeah, and I want to actually, I want them to demonstrate what it was about the temperature or the sea level that meant they couldn't continue living where they were. Well, everyone moved looking into, forward to it. I'm all ears. Because I'm all ears. Okay. Just find me an anymore. example. All right. Write about it. Uh, okay. Uh, we're going to move on from that. Although I do have to mention, in that longer video of Chris Packham, he does read out the bits in the Climate uh, Change Act that the government have put into law, with, within which they make specific commitments. I think that's where he's trying to see if there's a legal uh, issue with the Prime Minister right. deciding to not commit to those. Uh, let's uh, move on to you, Isabel. Uh, were you there for the speech? This is this is leader of the House. Penny Morden's trending. Tell us why. Oh, my gosh. Where do we begin with this? So people will remember Penny Morden carrying her sword of truth in the coronation. Yeah, she looked like a powerful um, Jedi. She, I, I think it's maybe <laughs> gone a little bit to her head. Really? So, yes, so she got up on stage to do to be the warm-up act before uh, Rishi Sunak's speech. And my goodness, she went for it with this extraordinary speech, which was full of rhetoric about how we've all got to stand up and fight. And if we stand with our neighbours, we're going to fight. Let's Everyone's going to be yeah. fighting. Do you, do you want to have a look? I Shall I remind you of it for yeah. people who haven't seen it? Let's have a quick look. This is Penny Morden. As uh, Isabel was saying, she went on uh, stage before the Prime Minister took to the stage. Have a look. Stand up and fight. Because when you stand up and fight, the person beside you stands up and fights. And when our party stands up and fights, the nation stands up and fights. Oh my God. Uh, it, honestly, it is... I mean, we could stand up and oh, do we fight each other? It's quite alarming. Is it... Look at no. Ava's body language. Yeah, it's, it's very uncomfortable. It and it's kind of li linked as well to what the Minister of Policing was saying, right? Chris Foote was like, we should all do a citizen's arrest, you know? So it's like, should I we just start arresting each of, other? And there could be a lot of fighting Did going she, on in playgrounds. Are we being, take it yeah. too literally. Are we being unfair? Did she define what we're what people should be finding okay, against. Look, if we, if we want to be fair, yes. what we could say is what she was trying to do was speak to her audience in that room, yes. not a television audience. What she was saying is to the small number of diehard Conservatives that paid a lot of money to come and listen to these Cabinet Ministers talking what many outside of those rooms might think of as a lot of twaddle, uh, they want to be energised for the battle ahead, which is the battle to remain in power. So she 
she was trying to galvanise the troops to carry on knocking on doors and trying to persuade people to vote okay. Conservative. I mean, she went on to say that, then the whole world stands up and fights. It was ter really quite was frightening. That, I who wrote that? There was a lot of fighting that? in it. There was a lot of fighting. Uh, Ava, uh, it's World Teachers Day today. It's trending, and I thought, you know, you might want to pay a, a special tribute to someone very close to you. Yes, I mean, well, yeah, my family, my sister is a teacher, but also most of my best friends from school are now all teachers as well. So it is a subject very close to my heart. Um, it's World Teacher Day. We don't appreciate them enough, and we definitely definitely don't pay them enough, you know. I, so did you like the bit of Sunak's speech yesterday where he talked about doing a £30,000 tax break for teachers? I thought that was quite good. Yeah, yeah. but it's also, you know, it's, it's, it's also a little bit too little too late for a lot of people in my life uh, who have had to pay a, a lot, you know, it's a lot of money at the moment if you want to train to become a teacher. Yeah. And then when you do eventually get there, you're going to be paid... 30 not, grand at best. Well, at teaching best. assistants at are best. also very underpaid, aren't yeah. they? I, I wonder whether that was also linked to the fact that because most of what we heard yesterday was floated in the weeks before. Remember taking English and maths as uh, two extra subjects, yeah. the, the, the new yeah. way of doing A-levels. What Most teachers stood up and said, you don't have enough maths teachers to do that. No, so that true. perhaps this £30,000 of tax-free money towards teachers is, is, is his way of saying, well... But he's got a good long time to find those teachers because that policy isn't coming in until like 2035 sure, yeah. or There something. is also a bursary at the moment that is available for teachers. So during your training, you are allotted around 20 so it's not really a new announcement. It's just a bit of a bumper on the okay. top on the top there. A little bit of extra. Anyway, World Teachers Day. I don't know. Pick up the phone. Thank you, teacher. Would you do? I liked my. I quite liked my teachers. Did you? Did you have good teachers? I think everyone remembers one I or two outstanding teachers. Yes. And they can make a huge impact on your life. Can't well, I was terribly behaved at school, so oh, I find that hard yeah. to believe. Yeah. <laughs>